Welcome to a beautiful 96 degree day. Today, we are going to start getting ready for harvest. See how those soybeans are starting to get a lighter color hue to them? That means we got about three weeks before those are gonna be out of the field. Once we're out in the field, we are not going to be getting anything done until the end of the year around the farm. So anything we want to do right now, we need to get done basically this week. Otherwise, it is not going to happen until next summer. So we're gonna start by getting everything that's in the driveway that we do not want in the driveway when the snow falls out of here. So the old floor supports that used to be in the bin, Bye. Unfortunately, we are going to have to take two trips. The trailer's not quite big enough to get another pallet. We have a third pallet of these floor supports and a pallet of a bunch of plywood. So, two trips. We're going to go careful on this one, though, because some of these are kind of balancing. We're going to take this nice and slow. We have a long two-mile drive ahead of us. We got the first piece down. Silly piece of metal on here. See how many we can not knock over here when we lift this off. Oh, boy. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay, perfect. Beep, 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 beep. Very carefully. So here's kind of what I'm thinking. We have this building over at Kristen and Rusty's. I think it's like 25 feet wide and probably 60 feet long. It's a low building. There's not a very high ceiling, so you can't get very much big stuff in it, but you can get small stuff in it, which is what I want. So really, I wanna come in, kind of clean some of this junk out of here. There's some stuff we're gonna keep, like we have an old garage door that's insulated that literally never got used and got parked in here. We'll keep that in, in case someday we find an application for that. But I got a little bit of scrap metal in this back corner that we can get out, but then we'll just get the leaf blower in here, get everything cleaned up, and then we can get all of our low stuff in here. It'll be out of the sun. It'll be out of the weather, kind of. I can see we only have like 87 holes in here, so it's better than nothing. Done a poor job of controlling weeds this year, but this is our new scrap metal pile. There's actually concrete under this, but all the giant ragweed and water hemp grew up through the cracks. So I need to get in there with a weed whacker and get that cleaned up. But then we'll have access to all of our scrap metal pile, the good stuff that we could possibly use for projects, as well as the stuff that we like to keep in the building, all in one spot. And frankly, most importantly, it's out of the way and it's easy to get to. Load number two. <laughs> at the new found area we have for activities right here. Oh, that's beautiful. So now just around the corner and on the other side of the bend side, we have the last of the permanent, well, I'm gonna call it the stuff that's been sitting outside for a really long time that we need to give a permanent home that is not here. Pretty much everything on this trailer is going to go over into the low shed at Kristen and Rusty's. As I sort through it, I might find some stuff that I have just decided at this point. You know what? We're going to scrap it. But we're going to pull this trailer over there first. And then we'll get to that when we actually get to the sorting and putting things inside of the building. The next trailer is Cooper's Camper. Little backstory: We used to have a train track that ran through a few miles away. There was a reefer trailer one night with hauling ketchup packets. And it drove across the train tracks and got hit by the train. Tore the trailer right in half. That is this trailer. Grandpa bought it from the place that totaled it out and he ended up setting it on top of a old truck frame. Welded up a gooseneck on the front and lo and behold, this was the trailer dad used to haul pigs to market. Fast forward from 2002 when we got out of the pig market, it's been sitting in the weeds since Cooper was looking for a 4-H project to do. So he decided to make it into a camper. A camper that is leaking and has black mold on the ceiling now. Fully outfitted <laughs> with air conditioning and everything. I don't know what Cooper wants to do with it, but it's over at my house and I don't really want it here anymore. I'd bring it to his house, but that might make him a little angry. So we're gonna hide this over at Kristen and Rusty's on the concrete pad until Cooper figures out what he's gonna do with it. Next up, we got the old Dacon. This is an old wagon we used to use to help transfer corn around in different bins. We basically used it as a holding tank, then you could transfer it to something else. I think there is a little corn still in the bottom of it. I hope there's not, but 
we're gonna find out here right now. Uh, oh yeah, it's actually pretty clean. Just a little bit up in there. We'll climb up and scrape it out. We will probably pretty much never use this again unless we need it for a special situation of some sort. Like if somebody got a semi stuck on the side of the road and we needed to grain vac it off and put it into something and unload it quick, this could be used for it. It's not worth a whole lot of money, so honestly it's more handy for us to have it than for us to get rid of it. But same thing, I don't want it over here. So this is going on the concrete pad at Kristen and Rusty's as well. The scrap guys are supposed to come get these barrels. They cannot be brought to the scrapyard as is because they need to have holes punctured inside of them so that way the scrapyard will accept them because right now, they could possibly explode if they crush, get crushed, and there's something inside of them that is compressive and you, we don't want anything bad to happen. I don't know when those guys are going to be out here, so those are going to be concrete pad. This is an old running gear for an old hay rack. We'll probably never use it. It appears we are missing a wheel. This is going to concrete pad. Then we got the old Jeep. The old 1967 or 69, maybe it's 1968, I really don't know. The Jeep Kaiser, the Jeep M715. Unlike everything else here, that is actually going to be staying here. I want to get that running. I think that would be a super cool farm vehicle. The engine in it, I don't know what's wrong with it. We'll probably put a different one in so that way it has a little bit more power. The one in there, it goes like 55 miles an hour when you absolutely have it fully wrapped out, which something a little smoother maybe a little nicer that project is headed to the bottom of the list though because we got like 10,000 other things we need to get done across the whole farm before we get to this so while that sits and waits to be worked on I think we'll have a beautiful home for it right there I don't want this stuff off the end of the ramp here because we want to extend the driveway to come out basically where all this stuff is sitting so that way we have more room to turn the semis around I don't want it here because then you got to worry about accidentally running into that I don't want to pull it off over into the grass because now we got to worry about moving it every so often so that way we can mow under it i just want it gone 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 give it a home and we don't have to worry about it again and another thing that i've noticed if we have an area that is clean it is really easy to keep a clean area clean and then we can have a zero tolerance policy zero tolerance meaning we don't put anything in the driveway because nothing belongs for a permanent spot in the driveway we use the driveway to drive if we're going to put something permanent somewhere let's give it an actual home where we have an actual application for it that's going to make the farm run so much smoother makes it a lot easier to find things and overall just it makes me feel better For the rest of the trailers, we are going to need to utilize the dually because this has a fifth wheel hookup in the back and none of our other trucks do. Oh man, it's a good thing the air conditioner does not work in this because it's only 93 degrees out right now. Oh, one ton's just pitching. <laughs> the skid loader and the other stuff and bring it all over at once so that way we can just have everything to empty off that trailer we're gonna get that thing empty because we're gonna be selling that trailer we just don't use it anymore so we're gonna try to knock out a bunch of birds with one stone get everything stationed we're, we're learning logistics right now looking at the beans over here at Kristen and Rusty's it's kind of interesting when we look out on that hillside we just see the different colors going on must be maybe some different fertility different soil types is handling the drought differently with this dry period of weather we're having. I don't know if we're officially in a drought, but it's it's kind of fascinating. You just look across the whole countryside and you can see it. For that wagon, we're gonna need a different hitch. I don't think we have one in the truck. I guess I should probably look first. Yep, there's not one in there. We need a flat hitch. Which pen, if that was a flat hitch, where would I be? Let's go look in the other truck. Okay, now we just need the Ooh, those can be a doozy to find sometimes. Will that fit? Okay. Cotter key. There's one. Since 
So this thing only has three wheels. I'm hoping I can pull it down the road like this, but we're gonna find out. Screwdriver works as a hitch pin, right? It is for now. Oh, hey, Cal. Hi. <laughs> I don't know if the crank on this works. If it doesn't, we're gonna have to pull it with the skip loader. We'll try. My goodness, this might just work. The real question is, how high is this jack gonna go? Because we're sitting pretty low with that. I'm just glad this thing works. Because usually when they sit for a long time, it seems like past experience says they get stuck and then they don't work. Never mind, we're using the skid loader. What's up? I'm gonna start on this morning. I'm gonna move it over where the enclosed trailer is right now, so it's out of the way. I'm gonna bring this over to Kristen and Rusty's though. This? Yeah, put it on the concrete until you decide what you're gonna do with it. I'll just throw a match in it, let it burn, and just haul it in there. You can do that over there. Okay! <laughs> on the road again! Might be onto something here, lifting it up. <laughs> so we get more cranking action. I never would have guessed that spun. Trying to sneak it between all Cooper's hay bales here. I don't know if we're gonna be able to make it or not. We have the trailer on behind us. It's gonna be tight. Be careful where we drive through here too, because there's a little well right there. We don't want to drive over that. And somehow I'm stuck. Four-wheel drive is not working in this truck again. Or is that sitting on the ground? Maybe I can just drive out. That would be okay. Oh, hopefully that works. Nice and easy. Oh, no way. <laughs> it worked. And then there was one. I'm really hoping I can scoop the forks up underneath the hitch on this and drag it over to where it needs to go because there's a wasp nest somewhere on the Jeep. And I... Those things are so mean. Dad and Grandpa welded some sort of custom hitch. I think this is an adjustable hitch. I don't really know why we had them back in the day but we did and so we got a nice wide area that we can scoop up under it's just a matter of making sure those front wheels are staying straight where's that nasty little booger at He's somewhere here one flying around oh there he is look at that now stinking thing it's trying to get me already oh yeah we took the wasps off there's a whole bunch of them flying around here i don't know how well the camera picks it up but I see at least four of them. I had an absolute bear cat of a time getting this thing tucked up in here. This front tire being flat. Whenever we pushed forward, it wanted to turn to the right hard. So I had to play the delegate game of it turned all the way to the right, then I'd have to come to the other side, I'd push on the tire, get it to turn all the way to the left, I could push it like five feet, it would turn all the way to the right, and I had to keep doing that all the way from back there. It took me like 30 minutes to go from there to here, but it's in a home now. That's gonna be a Cooper project, hopefully this winter. He says he wants to get on it. It sounds like he wants to put a 6.7 diesel in it, and maybe some different axles, different wheels, different suspension maybe. It's a ton and a quarter right now. So it absolutely feels like you're driving a lumber wagon around, which <laughs> not very enjoyable to drive like that. Next up in the nice shade, we gotta get that hose out of that water tank and then we're gonna take this pump. We need to drain all the water out of it. We need to get it winterized. Where's the drain plug at? Okay, I gotta get a socket up for that one. Oh, unfortunately it's a little high up there. Ooh climb on the skid loader. Now getting out here is the easy part. It's when you gotta get back down. That can sometimes be challenging. Oh, gross! Ugh, that stinks. <laughs> this is the big one. <laughs> we put the lid on the top. We got the ground cleaned up. That looks a lot better. Now we can get some eyes through here and not have to worry about running anything over. Now we're going to try to bring this pump down to the main heated shop. We'll get it power washed. We'll pull the plug on the bottom. Probably pull the air filter off, see how dirty that is. And we will drain the gas out of it. It's a little bit of a bittersweet moment right now. We're taking one of our last drives in the black truck. I leased this particular truck from Sid Dillon in Blair, Nebraska. And I had a three-year lease on it. 
and <laughs> I can't really believe it, but we are coming up on three years now. We could put 30,000 miles on it in three years. We've put 21,080, so definitely kept her under the mileage, kept her in good condition. I don't know what we're gonna get next, but bittersweet because it's going, but sweet because new truck coming at some point. Welcome to the main heated shop. In all seriousness, why do we have 7,001 hammers over here and at the other farm we have zero? Sounds like Dad and Cooper just got done meeting with the guy who looked at our 12-row folding corn head. He bought it, so now we don't have that anymore. Cooper got a head. We'll have more on that later, what we're going to be running this year, but... If we could get a nice rain here soon, it would prolong harvest a little bit, but right now it looks like we're dry and stuff is turning quick. First up on winterizing this pump, there is a little plug down there and you just use a regular socket. Or so I think we're gonna make sure we get that all the way in there because we don't want to strip it out. I broke part of the hammer. Oh, it's turning. Oh, you would think that has like half a pound of pressure on it when you turn this. Hardly even move it. It's like nothing. Physics. Hopefully this is an oil plug. Ooh, gross. I need you. Ooh, and you. Probably like one of those Japanese finger traps where there's a little trick to it. I might need both hands. Figured it out. Ooh, a little bit in there. Come on. Not enough in there. We might have to drain it through the bowl and the carb. Oh, that's for sure got to be a 7 16 or a half inch. <sighs> Neither. Are you metric? Yeah, you little booger. 10 millimeter. Just in case, we're also grabbing a Phillips screwdriver. Yay. Perfect. I got gasoline all over my fingers. Oh, we might be here a minute. There must not be a whole lot left in the gas tank because my little siphoner thing wouldn't bring any out. So I just took the bolts out of the bottom of the bowl of the carburetor and we're just going to run everything through the old fuel line down just as if it was running. And that is just a trickle in there. Just a trickle. Whenever we park something, we always try to get in the habit of turning the gas off on it so that way at least everything in the carburetor gets sucked out. And if we get any varnishing in the fuel, then it doesn't clog the jets and stuff all up. Otherwise, you have a whole fun procedure of tearing that apart and getting a little needle in there, cleaning those out. Ideally, if we can, we like to drain the gas, too. And then we kind of get the best of both worlds, and we don't get all the varnishing in the tank. We also don't get it in the carburetor. Never done it this way before. We're going to make it work. It's about empty. As empty as we're going to get it. Make sure we get that little gasket back in there so that way it doesn't drip on us later. I think this thing is pretty much ready now. Just we'll get her washed up. Actually, we should probably check the air filter. I can't imagine this thing being dirty at all because it was literally around no dust. Yeah, that we're good. Oh yeah, good pressure. Woo! Getting her real doused down now. Everything on the roadside of the farm is all picked up, put away. Nice and clean, open driveway. Everything over here on the bin site side, it's all cleaned up. Coming underneath of the overhead, we don't have anything down there anymore. So we're gonna be able to widen up that driveway out to the edge of the corn. Cooper's hay shed is looking all fat and happy. That baby's packed to the gills. We got everything cleaned through there down the driveway. This whole part of the driveway is all picked up. For the first time ever, I think that I can fully confidently say that the outside of the main farm is completely cleaned up and fully ready for harvest. And it is the weekend. The sun's just about getting ready to go down. So I'm gonna call a little bit of an early night here. We're gonna go spend some time with some friends and family. I suggest you go do the same. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.